So from yesterday, we were talking about drawing a line of best fit and writing the equations for that particular line. So now we're going to talk more specifically about what we can do with that information. So for this line, this is the exact same example from yesterday, we um, drew the line and we determined that the slope was one-half and that the y-intercept was four, and we determined that the equation for this line is one-half x plus um, four, or y equals one-half x plus four. But we can also make predictions based on this line. So how would you determine the height of a plant in 20 weeks? Well, we know that the 20 weeks is on the x. So if you simply replace 20 for the x, we would have y equals 1 half times 20 plus 4. And half of 20 is 10, so 10 plus 4 equals 14. 14 what? 14 inches. We would guess, we would approximate, we could kind of figure out that our plant would be approximately 14 inches tall in four weeks, or sorry, in 20 weeks. How long will it take the plant to be eight inches in height? So we could look at this and try and draw, we can estimate from our graph, go across, but you know, that's not always accurate. Um, in this particular example, it is, we can allow, we can do that. It's called interpolation because it's inside of our graph. Um, so we could draw it across and we could see that it's going to be eight weeks. But let's double check that it should take eight weeks. So how long will it take the plant to be eight inches in height? Eight inches in height is um, the y-axis. So we're going to substitute the eight for the y. And what eight equals one-half x plus four minus four from both sides. Now we're just bio-booping. So 1 half x is equal to 4. And to get rid of that fraction coefficient, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So x is equal to 8. And so we got it in either way. So again, the process is you figure out the y-intercept. You figure out the slope. And we find the slope by doing what? Pick two points, slip and slide and then you write the equation. And keep in mind, your line may be different from my line, because remember, these lines are approximations, but I want you to do the practice, at least with me, um, in terms of how you're gonna answer these questions and do this work. So, the y-intercept is 20. The slope, we're going to use those two points. Those two points are 6, 12.5 and 10, 7.5. And we stack them on top of each other. 6, 12.5 um, over 10, 7.5 and slip and slide. 12.5 minus 7.5 is going to be 5, and 6 minus 10 is a negative 4. So our slope is going to be 5 over negative 4. So the equation, so the y-intercept is our b, our slope is our m, the equation is y equals mx plus b, that means it's y equals, our m is negative 4 fifths, or sorry, 5 fourths, x plus 20. Now what do each of those mean in terms of this problem? So when we're saying that the y-intercept is 20, it means that our that the um, tub starts with 20 gallons of water in it. And when the slope is negative 5, that means there are 5 less gallons, because it's negative, of water in the tub every 4 minutes. And how do we find that? Well, we know that it's always y over x, and our y is the gallons, so it's 5 gallons 
and the um, X is our time in minutes, so it's four minutes. All we're doing when we're trying to interpret what this means is look at our graph. So now we have to make some predictions. So how many gallons are in the tub after eight minutes? Well, eight minutes is our X. And our equation again was Y equals negative 5 fourths x plus 20. So after 8 minutes, because minutes is x, we're going to replace the 8 for the x. So y equals negative 5 fourths times 8 plus 20. Please cross cancel, makes life easier. So this becomes y equals negative 10 plus 20 equals a positive 10. And what does that mean? That means there are 10 gallons in the tub, or average of 10 gallons. Some tubs are going to drain slower. Sometimes the drain gets more hair in it. And we can look across after 8 minutes. Here's 8 minutes. You can see our line crosses at 10 gallons. So our solving our equation does match up with the line that we drew. But what does this mean for this particular point? It's above the line. Well, remember, our line is an estimation for all. So when we're talking about th this particular point, that is the measurement that was taken, and there were a little bit more than 10 gallons left in the bathtub after 8 minutes. It could be because there's, yeah, again, more hair in it, maybe... Um, inaccuracy of measurement. Hey, it's a different bathtub and it's a different drain. So, um, how long will it take to completely drain the bathtub? Well, if we want it to be completely drained, then that means there will be zero gallons. Right? Does that make sense? We want zero gallons of water. So, zero gallons, gallons is our y-axis, so what we're going to do is substitute the zero for the y. So, zero equals negative five-fourths x plus 20, and we just bio-boop it barrier, isolate the variable, opposite operation, bring down the variable term, minus 20 is negative five-fourths x, and how do we get rid of our fraction coefficients? We multiply by the reciprocal, 4 over negative 5. Don't lose your negatives. Please cross, cancel. It makes life easier. Negative 5 cancels with the negative 20, and it gives you a positive 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So x is 16. 16 what? 16 minutes. You can also see our line kind of ended up at 16. Our graph and our math match. What about this crazy line out here? All right, this new point that was added. Let's clear our things. My tub. So this is some other person's tub is the new data point. So does it drain faster or slower than the average? Hmm. Well, the easiest way to figure this out is to kind of look where this data point is. So at whatever, 11 minutes, 10 and a half minutes, it still has 16 gallons. So this is at like 10 and a half, 10.5 comma 16. But the average at 10 and a half minutes would have closer to, say, six gallons in it. So the average is going to have less water in it, which means it drains faster, so mine drains slower than the average. I think that's the easiest way of finding it. We could also talk about the steepness or flatness of a line. Um, and this, my line is probably going to be a quite a bit um, flatter because they're both going to start at 20. 
because it's still going to be a 20 gallon bathtub. So it's going to start at 20 and go through my line. And so it's going to be a flatter line, which means it's a slower rate, which means it drains slower. And either way, that will work. Okay. You should have drawn your line of best fit for the next one. Go ahead and try and write an equation for your line and see how close it comes to my answer. So how did I find my slope of my line? Remember this is 9 comma 35 and I slip and slide. I also use the origin which is 0. 35 over 9. Plug them both in. Because it's plus 0 I can simplify my equation simply to this. So the y-intercept of 0 means that with zero games played, you can have zero points scored. And that makes sense. If you haven't played a game, you can't score any points. Okay. The slope of 35 over 9 means that with 35 points, the average player has played nine games. How did I do that? I looked at our labels, and I remember that y over x tells me about those parts. And how many points would you expect a person to score if they play five games? So I use y equals 35 ninths x, that's 35 ninths x, five games, five games, so it I'm going to replace my x with 5. So y equals 35 times 5 divided by 9. Twenty-five carry a two, one seventy-five over nine. So that's going to be approximately 18 games. I would have to pull out my calculator. Um, and how many games before 50 points are scored? So 50 points are the y-axis. So I'm going to put 50 equals 35 ninths x. And to solve that, I multiply both sides by 9 over 35. Cross cancel goes in 7 times, and it goes in 10 times. x equals 90 divided by 7, which is going to be 13 games, approximately. Um, 7 times uh, 13 is 91, so 12.9 games. Can't have 12.9, got to have a 13th game. Okay, using your line, answer these questions. So again, you're going to draw a line of best fit. Try and go through at least two points. Determine what the y-intercept is and what it means in terms of this equation. Write the equation for the line. Do slip and slide and determine what the slope of the line is and what it means. Remember that we're talking about test scores and TV time. And then using your equation for the line, approximate how many, um, what they would score if they had um, six hours of TV nightly and with one hour of TV nightly, what is their test scores? Do those for your particular line. For the last graph that's on your notes page, we have this one. What is the equation for the line of best fit for this? 
Well, if you see something like this and the question says, what is the line of best fit? You have to immediately say, there is no line of best fit for this scatter plot. There is no association for the relationship between these um, points. And so you cannot just assume that um, a line of best fit can be written. So there, um, you will need to write a response that says, because there is no because there is no relationship between the number of books read and the shoe size, a line of best fit cannot be written, so there cannot be an equation for the line. All right, 